Hello friends, it is I, Frankie, back with another travel video. Back in May, I went to Fukui Prefecture for the weekend with my friend Rosa. So let's get into some things to do and eat when you visit Fukui. I did drive, but all the places we visited are accessible by public transit as well. It might just take a bit longer. The first place on our list was Eiheiji, a temple complex located in the mountains just outside of Fukui City. The temple was founded in the year 1244 by a scholar named Dogen, who introduced Soto Zen Buddhism to Japan from China. There are many sects of Buddhism, but Eiheiji is one of the two main temples for Soto Zen Buddhism. The complex is really big, with over 70 buildings. As you can begin to see here, it's really lush and green in the warmer months, but it's also a really popular spot in autumn to see the foliage. On the road leading up to Eiheiji, you can find many cafes and restaurants, although we were a bit too early for anything to be open, I think it was around 10am, but somehow we did see an ice cream shop that was open, and we could not resist trying black sesame. The next stop was Maruoka Castle, one of the 12 original castles in Japan, which basically just means the main tower hasn't been destroyed in natural disasters or war, but Maruoka Castle is special, to me at least, because it has a ghost story. There seems to be a theme throughout history, not only in Japan but plenty of other countries as well, of using human sacrifices in the foundations of buildings, bridges, and other structures. When Maruoka Castle was being built in the 1500s, the stone wall of the main tower kept collapsing no matter how many times they rebuilt it. Then, someone suggested Hitobashira, a human pillar, whose sacrifice might appease the gods and ensure the completion of the castle. A poor one-eyed widow with two sons, named Oshizu, volunteered to be buried alive on the condition that one of her sons would be made a samurai. She wanted at least one of them to have a better life than what she could provide for them. So they built the stone wall once more, this time with Oshizu standing upright inside like a pillar, and she was eventually crushed by the weight of the stones. And when the wall was complete, it did not collapse, so Oshizu's sacrifice worked. But, unfortunately, the promise was not kept, and neither of her sons became samurai. Every April after that, the moat around the castle would overflow with the spring rain, and they say these were Oshizu's tears. Eventually, a small tomb was erected for Oshizu to appease her spirit. Next, we headed to the coast to see the Tojimbo Cliffs. The cliffs also have quite an unsettling story. In the year 1182, there was a monk named Tojimbo who lived at a nearby temple. He was apparently a terrible and irresponsible person and his peers really disliked him. Very much so. They devised a plan to get Tojimbo near the cliffs. They told him that they were going to have a party by the sea and when they got there, they kept offering him drinks. Tojimbo drank and drank until he could hardly stand. He may have been pushed, or maybe he lost his balance, but either way, he went tumbling down the cliffs and into the sea. When the water gets rough by the cliffs, it's because of Tojimbo's wrath over his wrongful death. Ghost stories aside, this type of rugged cliff formation, formed by erosion and strong waves, is very unique, and you can only find them in a few places in the world, including... Hukui, obviously, but also Northern Ireland and Iceland. Obviously, you have to proceed with caution when walking along the cliffs. There have been many accidents with people falling. Unfortunately, it is also a hot spot for people taking their own lives. Someone on Instagram told me that even during the day, people try sometimes. So please, please, please be careful. There are also plenty of restaurants, gift shops, and sweet shops in the area. Since we were by the sea, we wanted to try some of the seafood. I had read online before the trip that Echizen crab was famous in Fukui, so I wanted a seafood bowl that had crab. It was delicious. 
You may know this already, but I really love trying unique ice cream flavors, so I try to find new flavors when I travel. Here there were so many options, so Rosa and I decided to get two cones and share them. Otherwise we would have had three cones each that day. The first one we tried was purple sweet potato. It was sweet, but not too sweet. Then we found a very unique one, squid ink. The gray color was really pretty, but I didn't really taste too much of the actual squid ink. But to be honest, so I've never had squid ink, so I don't know what I should have been looking out for. It didn't taste funky. I don't know if that says anything about it. I don't know. There's a small island very close to the cliffs called Oshima. You can walk onto the island via this red bridge. You could walk from the Tojimbo cliffs, but if you drive, there's another parking lot right by the bridge and it's free. So I would recommend doing that to save time instead of walking for like 30 minutes or whatever it is. Um, this island is, you guessed it, haunted. They say that if you walk around the island counterclockwise, you will die soon after. The husband visited this island at night when he was a university student, and he said it was really scary at night because there are no lights on the entire island because it's uninhabited. Um, he was with a few friends, and as soon as they approached the end of the bridge, one of his friends tried to take off running, just straight into the darkness, and he said someone was calling for him. So, um, yeah, that's very spooky. When Rosa and I were there, I could not remember if the wrong way to walk was clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, I guess I could have just googled it, but I'm lazy. Um, yeah, so we ended up walking counterclockwise. Oops. This was nearly two months ago, though, and we are both alive and well, so... Haha! -ha. Take that, Grim Reaper. Um, it is a really cool island. Whenever I'm on uninhabited islands like this, I always get too much into my imagination, and I feel like I'm playing a game of survival. When you think about all the bugs, though, it really is a battle. We did have a pretty busy day on the first day, but we ended it at Mikuni Sunset Beach. Hukui has some really nice beaches. If you're looking for a day trip or a weekend, it's a great option. From the Osaka area, it's only about a two or three hour drive, depending which beach you go to. I didn't capture any of the hotel, but I can link below which hotel we stayed at. It was not particularly good or bad, it was just a comfy place to rest for the night. We only had one thing, well, two if you include food, on the itinerary for the following day, and that was the Dinosaur Museum. Did you know that Hukui is the place in Japan that had the most dinosaurs? This is also one of the leading dinosaur museums in the world. There's a museum with skeletons, fossils, models, etc. And there's a park, and there's even a fossil excavating experience, but that one requires a reservation, so we didn't do it. This seems like a really fun place for kids, but also for adults, too. Before heading back to Osaka, we had to try another one of the foods that Fukui is famous for, and that is sauce katsudon, and soba is also pretty famous there too. So luckily, Rosa's friend recommended a place that had both of those things in one set meal. Well, that's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye! Did you say? I said, I'm afraid, but make it fashion. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.